Today is Wednesday, February 21st. What to know about a controversial ruling that is impacting fertility treatments in Alabama and might start affecting others around the U.S. Also, we'll break down the results of the largest COVID-19 vaccine safety study to date. Plus, we have details of another big case involving race and school admissions, how some passenger flights were pushed to supersonic speeds, and what to expect from the so-called silver tsunami among boomers. Those stories and even more news to know today, coming up. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Alabama has just opened up a new front in the national debate over reproductive rights. In a first-of-its-kind ruling, the state Supreme Court decided frozen embryos created through in vitro fertilization should be considered people, and that means clinics can be held liable for what happens to embryos. The decision was issued in wrongful death cases brought by three couples who had their embryos destroyed in an accident at a fertility clinic. Some anti-abortion groups celebrated the ruling, saying it was backed up by basic science. But now there are new concerns that IVF services in the state could be restricted or even ended as clinics consider new legal ramifications of the process. Already one Alabama fertility clinic has decided to pause IVF treatment until the law is more clear. And reproductive rights experts say courts in other states could issue similar rulings or state lawmakers could pass related legislation, leaving clinics all over the country vulnerable. And that's a big deal, since the CDC says IVF accounts for up to 2% of the nation's births every year. Infertility specialists say this ruling raises a lot of questions for both patients and providers, like can they freeze future embryos? Can they ever donate or destroy unused embryos? And so on. And for now, there don't seem to be answers to those questions. So, to be continued. Two men are now being charged for last week's shooting at a Super Bowl victory rally in Kansas City. Court documents were released yesterday explaining that the two men were strangers. Apparently, one of them was in a group of people who got agitated, thinking people nearby were staring at them. So he confronted the other group. And within seconds, he and another man allegedly started firing at each other, even though they were surrounded by crowds of people. Both of them were shot and have been in the hospital ever since. But more than 20 others were shot, too, including children, and one person died. Two teenagers were also detained last week on gun-related charges, and investigators say more arrests are still possible. The U.S. now has a plan to punish Russia for the death of opposition leader Alexei Navalny and the two-year war in Ukraine. The White House says it's getting ready to announce a major package of sanctions that will target a range of items like the country's defense and industrial bases and sources of revenue that power Russia's war machine. The exact details are expected to be revealed on Friday. Meanwhile, the U.S. is still pressing Russia for complete transparency about how Navalny died in prison. But one White House spokesperson says, quote, whatever story the Russian government decides to tell the world, it's clear that President Putin and his government are responsible. Navalny's family is still pushing for the release of his body. His widow is accusing Russia of hiding it to cover up what she says was murder. Separately, an amateur ballerina who was a dual citizen of the U.S. and Russia was arrested on charges of treason yesterday. She is now facing life in prison for allegedly donating $51 to Ukraine's war effort. She's just the latest American to be detained in Russia, joining a Wall Street Journal reporter, Radio Liberty journalist, former Marine, and others. The White House says it's still trying to get more information. But it also reiterated strong warnings about the danger any U.S. citizen faces inside Russia right now. The largest global vaccine safety study to date found the COVID-19 vaccines are linked to some risks. It found the vaccines that protect against severe illness, death, and long COVID symptoms were also connected to small increases in neurological, blood, and heart-related conditions. The events were rare and identified early in the pandemic. For example, they include a slightly higher risk of heart-related inflammation from the Pfizer and Moderna shots and a slightly higher risk of a blood clot in the brain, or Guillain-Barre syndrome, from AstraZeneca shots. More than 13.5 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered around the world over the last three years, and researchers say only a small portion of them were at all harmed by these shots. They also point out that a COVID-19 infection can actually cause the same issues. So many experts say the benefits of the vaccines still outweigh the risks. Others say it's still important to keep up the research to help people who have been impacted and improve the safety of the vaccines even more. The FDA approved a new medicine to help people with severe food allergies. 
Zolaer is considered the first approved drug that can help protect people from allergies of things like milk, eggs, wheat, walnuts, and peanuts. Unlike an EpiPen, it's not meant to be used during an allergic reaction. Instead, people are supposed to take it as a shot repeatedly every few weeks to help lower the risks of severe reactions over time from foods they're accidentally exposed to. The FDA says people who take it should keep avoiding foods they're allergic to. And also, fair warning, the medication itself could trigger anaphylaxis. So it's recommended when people start taking it, it should be in a healthcare setting. Zolaer is now approved for adults and children one year and older. More news is still coming up, but first, thanks to our sponsor, Lumi. We are well into 2024 now, and yes, some of the things I thought I would do in the new year did not happen, or products I tried did not last. But one thing that I'm still using all the time is my Lumi deodorant. It really is my favorite deodorant. I'm always so impressed at how well it works, and I love all the options, from stick deodorant to deodorant wipes to body wash and more. I got to try all of them thanks to my starter pack, and now when I reorder, which I definitely will be, I can get all of my favorite products and scents. I especially like the cool cucumber scent, by the way. Lumi is a whole body deodorant that is clinically proven to block odor all day long and control odor for up to 72 hours. So check out Lumi's starter pack. It is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. That's over 40% off their starter pack, too. Use code NEWSWORTHY for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code NEWSWORTHY at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Now back to the news. The startup Neuralink is apparently seeing progress from the first human whose brain was implanted with its brain chip. Neuralink founder Elon Musk says the person has fully recovered and can now move a mouse around a computer screen just by thinking about it. The chip was implanted last month with a surgery, and Musk says there weren't any bad side effects. Now the goal is to get the patient to click the mouse as much as possible. Musk has much greater ambitions for Neuralink, though, saying with this first version, people should be able to fully control their phone or computer, and that eventually, Neuralink's chip devices will be able to treat conditions like obesity, autism, depression, and schizophrenia. Still, there are plenty of ethical and safety concerns surrounding these trials, and the nonprofit Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine says people should, quote, continue to be skeptical of the safety and functionality of any device produced by Neuralink. For now, though, these trials do have FDA approval and are ongoing. The U.S. Supreme Court cleared the way for one of the nation's most prestigious high schools to go ahead and use a controversial new admissions criteria. A little backstory here. The elite public school in Virginia faced criticism over how few Black and Hispanic students made up the student body. So it adopted what it calls race-neutral admission standards— The school board got rid of a rigorous entrance exam, dropped the application fee, and offered admission to the top students from each of the area's middle schools instead of the top applicants overall. And what ended up happening was more Black and Hispanic students got in. But that meant fewer admissions of Asian American students from affluent neighborhoods. Well, a group of parents said that wasn't fair, arguing that academic merit should be the only criteria, not a child's background. They sued to stop it. Flash forward to this week, and the U.S. Supreme Court decided not to hear this case. And this comes less than a year after the high court struck down affirmative action at colleges and universities, saying race should not be a factor in admissions. And a couple of conservative justices said they should have taken up this case, too, that it's basically a blueprint for evading last year's decision. But it seems the other seven justices disagreed. And with that, the new admissions policy stands. Some international flights have been hitting supersonic speeds this week because of record-breaking high winds. Most notably, a flight from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to Doha, Qatar, reached nearly 840 miles an hour over the weekend. That made it the fastest recorded passenger flight ever. Another flight from Washington, D.C. to London topped 800 miles an hour, too. It arrived 45 minutes early just because of the wind. Nothing was different about the plane. And those are just a couple of examples. Aeronautics experts say a faster jet stream really helps flights going from west to east. But for aircraft traveling west, there's real downsides like bumpier flights and slower travel times. America's largest retailer just announced a new deal meant to help it better compete with Amazon's ad business. 
Walmart says it's buying TV maker Vizio for $2.3 billion. And with that, it will be able to sell ads through streaming services on TV, on top of the ads it sells for display in Walmart stores and on Walmart's website. Ars Technica says it will also give Walmart new information about TV users, which can let the retailer sell more targeted ad space and help advertisers track ad results. Regulators still need to sign off on this deal, but Walmart expects it to be finalized as soon as this summer. Beyonce has made history once again, this time with her new single, Texas Hold'em. It debuted at number one on Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart, making her the first black woman with a number one country song. She actually now holds the number one spot on seven of the outlet's charts. You'll remember she debuted two new country songs, Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages on Super Bowl Sunday. And ever since, they've been topping the playlists and charts on Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube. So the Billboard feat should really come as no surprise. And expect the records to keep getting broken. Beyonce's next full album is coming out next month. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story every Wednesday. But first, a quick break to thank our sponsor, Honey Love. All of us have those certain items in our closet that you pick over everything else, right? For me, that is definitely Honey Love's Legging 2.0. They are stylish, comfortable, have great shaping, they're super soft with a cooling material, and they're convenient with pockets on the sides. Whether I'm working from home, working out, or running around town with my toddler, Honey Love's Legging 2.0 are my go-to. And when it comes to shapewear, I choose Honey Love every time as well. In fact, they have incredibly comfortable shapewear, tanks, bras, leggings, and more for everyday support or for an upcoming special event. I love the look and feel of all of their products I've tried so far. And our executive producer agrees there's a reason she chose Honey Love shapewear on her wedding day. Get 20% off your entire order with our exclusive link, honeylove.com slash newsworthy. Yes, treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash newsworthy. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off, honeylove.com slash newsworthy. After your purchase, they ask where you heard about them, so please support our show and tell them we sent you. Treat yourself to Honey Love because you deserve it. Okay, now back to Work Wednesday. So this year is expected to be a record-breaking one for retirement in the U.S. More than 4 million baby boomer Americans are poised to turn 65 this year and every year through 2027, representing the largest surge of retirement-aged Americans in history. And it's happening when there's already a labor shortage. As of last month, the Chamber of Commerce estimated the economy was still down about 1.7 million workers as compared to before the pandemic started. This wave of retirements will only make that number grow. Economists say this could all spell trouble for a lot of reasons. For starters, boomer retirees are still in high demand of goods and services. And overall, a low supply of workers pushes up wages. And while that might be good for some workers, both of those factors can also stoke inflation. All that said, some economists say the so-called silver tsunami is overblown, that it won't derail economic growth nearly as much as a recession would. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 